The Dutch Republic or United Provinces was a republic that existed from the formal creation of a confederacy in 1581 by several Dutch provinces which earlier seceded from Spanish rule until the Batavian Revolution in 1795. It was the predecessor state of the modern Netherlands and the first nation state of the Dutch people. Name the Republic was also known as the Republic of the Seven United Netherlands Dutch, Republiek der Zeven Verenigde Nederlanden, Republic of the Seven United Provinces Republiek der Zeven Verenigde Provincien, the United Provinces Verenigde Provincien, Seven Provinces Zeven Provincien, Federated Dutch Provinces Latin, Foderatai Belgi Provinciae, or the Dutch Federation Belgica Foderata. Common names in Dutch for the Republic in official correspondence were De Republiek, the Republic. Republiek der Verenigde Nederlanden, Republic of the United Netherlands. Republiek der Verenigde Provincien, Republic of the United Provinces. Republiek der Zeven Provincien, Republic of the Seven Provinces. Republiek der Zeven Verenigde Nederlanden, Republic of the Seven United Netherlands. Republiek der Zeven Verenigde Provincien. Republic of the Seven United Provinces Verenigde Provincien United Provinces Verenigde Provincien der Nederlanden United Provinces of the Netherlands Verenigde Staten der Nederlanden The United States of the Netherlands De Verenigde Gewesen The United Regions or one translation would be The United States De Zeven Verenigde Gewesen the Seven United Regions, or one translation would be, the Seven United States, and in Latin, Belgica Respublicae Foderatae. History until the 16th century, the Low Countries, corresponding roughly to the present-day Netherlands, Belgium, and Luxembourg, consisted of a number of duchies, counties, and prince bishoprics, almost all of which were under the supremacy of the Holy Roman Empire, with the exception of the County of Flanders, which was under the Kingdom of France. Most of the Low Countries had come under the rule of the House of Burgundy and subsequently the House of Habsburg. In 1549 Holy Roman Emperor Charles V issued the Pragmatic Sanction, which further unified the 17 provinces under his rule. Charles was succeeded by his son, King Philip II of Spain. In 1568 the Netherlands, led by William I of Orange, revolted against Philip II because of high taxes, persecution of Protestants by the government, and Philip efforts to modernize and centralize the devolved medieval government structures of the provinces. This was the start of the Eighty Years' War. In 1579 a number of the northern provinces of the Low Countries signed the Union of Utrecht, in which they promised to support each other in their defense against the Spanish army. This was followed in 1581 by the Act of Abjuration, the Declaration of Independence of the Provinces from Philip II. In 1582 the United Provinces invited Francis, Duke of Anjou to lead them, but after a failed attempt to take Antwerp in 1583, the Duke left the Netherlands again. After the assassination of William of Orange July 1584, both Henry III of France and Elizabeth I of England declined offers of sovereignty. However, the latter agreed to turn the United Provinces into a protectorate of England, Treaty of Nunsuch, 1585, and sent the Earl of Leicester as Governor-General. This was unsuccessful and in 1588 the provinces became a confederacy. The Union of Utrecht is regarded as the foundation of the Republic of the Seven United Provinces, which was not recognized by the Spanish Empire until the Peace of Westphalia in 1648. During the Anglo-French War 1778, the internal territory was divided into two groups, the Patriots, who were pro-French and pro-American, and the Orangists, who were pro-British. The Republic of the United Provinces faced a series of republican revolutions in 1783 to 1787. During this period, republican forces occupied several major Dutch cities. Initially on the defense, the Orangist forces received aid from Prussian troops and retook the Netherlands in 1787. 
The Republican forces fled to France, but then successfully reinvaded alongside the Army of the French Republic 1793 ousting Stadtholder William V, abolishing the Dutch Republic, and replacing it with the Batavian Republic 1795 after the French Republic became the French Empire under Napoleon, the Batavian Republic was replaced by the Napoleonic Kingdom of Holland 1806 The Netherlands regained independence from France in 1813. In the Anglo-Dutch Treaty of 1814 the names, "'United Provinces of the Netherlands' and "'United Netherlands' were used. In 1815 it was rejoined with the Austrian Netherlands and Liege the "'Southern Provinces' to become the Kingdom of the Netherlands, informally known as the United Kingdom of the Netherlands, to create a strong buffer state north of France. On 16 March 1815, the son of Stadtholder William V crowned himself King William I of the Netherlands. Between 1815 and 1890 the King of the Netherlands was also in a personal union the Grand Duke of the Sovereign Grand Duchy of Luxembourg. After Belgium gained its independence in 1830, the state became unequivocally known as the Kingdom of the Netherlands, as it remains today. Economy During the Dutch Golden Age in the late 16th and 17th centuries, the Dutch Republic dominated world trade, conquering a vast colonial empire and operating the largest fleet of merchantmen of any nation. The county of Holland was the wealthiest and most urbanized region in the world. The free trade spirit of the time was augmented by the development of a modern, effective stock market in the Low Countries. The Netherlands has the oldest stock exchange in the world, founded in 1602 by the Dutch East India Company, while Rotterdam has the oldest bourse in the Netherlands. The Dutch East India Company exchange went public in six different cities. Later, a court ruled that the company had to reside legally in a single city, so Amsterdam is recognized as the oldest such institution based on modern trading principles. While the banking system evolved in the Low Countries, it was quickly incorporated by the well-connected English, stimulating English economic output. Between 1590 and 1712 the Dutch also possessed one of the strongest and fastest navies in the world, allowing for their varied conquests, including breaking the Portuguese sphere of influence on the Indian Ocean and in the Orient, as well as a lucrative slave trade from Africa and the Pacific. Politics the Republic was a confederation of seven provinces, which had their own governments and were very independent, and a number of so-called generality lands. The latter were governed directly by the States General Staten General in Dutch, the federal government. The States General were seated in The Hague and consisted of representatives of each of the seven provinces. The provinces of the Republic were, in official feudal order, the Duchy of Gelders Gelderland in Dutch, the County of Holland, the County of Zeeland The Lordship of Utrecht formerly the Episcopal Principality of Utrecht The Lordship of Overijssel The Lordship of Frisia The Lordship of Groningen and Ameländen In fact, there was an eighth province, the County of Drenthe, but this area was so poor it was exempt from paying federal taxes and as a consequence was denied representation in the States General. Each province was governed by the provincial states, the main executive official though not the official head of state was a rodspensionaris. In times of war, the stadtholder, who commanded the army, would have more power than the rodspensionaris. In theory, the stadtholders were freely appointed by and subordinate to the states of each province. However, in practice the princes of Orange of the House of Orange Nassau, beginning with William the Silent, were always chosen as stadtholders of most of the provinces. Zeeland and usually Utrecht had the same stadtholder as Holland. There was a constant power struggle between the Orangists, who supported the stadtholders and specifically the Princes of Orange, and the Republicans, who supported the States General and hoped to replace the semi-hereditary nature of the stadtholdership with a true Republican structure. After the Peace of Westphalia, several border territories were assigned to the United Provinces. They were federally governed generality lands they were Stots Brabant, present North Brabant, Stots Vlaanderen, present Zeelandic Flanders, Stots Limburg around Maastricht, and Stots Opperjoer around Venlo after 1715. 
The States General of the United Provinces were in control of the Dutch East India Company (VOC) and the Dutch West India Company (WIC), but some shipping expeditions were initiated by some of the provinces, mostly Holland and Zeeland. The framers of the U.S. Constitution were influenced by the Constitution of the Republic of the United Provinces, as Federalist No. 20, by James Madison, shows. Such influence appears, however, to have been of a negative nature, as Madison describes the Dutch Confederacy as exhibiting imbecility in the government, discord among the provinces, foreign influence and indignities, a precarious existence in peace, and peculiar calamities from war. Apart from this, the American Declaration of Independence is similar to the Act of Abjuration, essentially the Declaration of Independence of the United Provinces, but concrete evidence that the former directly influenced the latter is absent. Religion in the Union of Utrecht of 20 January 1579, Holland and Zeeland were granted the right to accept only one religion in practice, Calvinism. Every other province had the freedom to regulate the religious question as it wished, although the Union stated every person should be free in the choice of personal religion and that no person should be prosecuted based on religious choice. William of Orange had been a strong supporter of public and personal freedom of religion and hoped to unite Protestants and Catholics in the new Union, and, for him, the Union was a defeat. In practice, Catholic services in all provinces were quickly forbidden, and the Dutch Reformed Church became the public or privileged church in the Republic. During the Republic, any person who wished to hold public office had to conform to the Reformed Church and take an oath to this effect. The extent to which different religions or denominations were persecuted depended much on the time period and regional or city leaders. In the beginning, this was especially focused on Roman Catholics, being the religion of the enemy. In 17th century Leiden, for instance, people opening their homes to services could be fined 200 guilders a year's wage for a skilled tradesman and banned from the city. Throughout this, however, personal freedom of religion existed and was one factor, along with economic reasons, in causing large immigration of religious refugees from other parts of Europe. In the first years of the Republic, controversy arose within the Reformed Church, mainly around the subject of predestination. This has become known as the struggle between Arminianism and Gomerism, or between Remonstrance and Contra Remonstrance. In 1618, the Synod of Dort tackled this issue, which led to the banning of the Remonstrant faith. Beginning in the 18th century, the situation changed from more or less active persecution of religious services to a state of restricted toleration of other religions, as long as their services took place secretly in private churches. Decline <inaudible> 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 Long-term rivalry between the two main factions in Dutch society, the Staatsgezinden Republicans and the Prinsgezinden Royalists or Orangists, sapped the strength and unity of the country. Johann de Witt and the Republicans did reign supreme for a time at the middle of the 17th century the first Stadtholderless period until his overthrow and murder in 1672. Subsequently, William III of Orange became Stadtholder. After a stadtholderless era of 22 years, the Orangists regained power, and his first problem was to survive the Franco-Dutch War with the derivative Third Anglo-Dutch War, when France, England, Munster and Cologne united against this country. Wars to contain the expansionist policies of France in various coalitions after the Glorious Revolution, mostly including England and Scotland after 1707, the United Kingdom, burdened the Republic with huge debts, although little of the fighting after 1673 took place on its own territory. The necessity to maintain a vast army against France meant that less money could be spent on the navy, weakening the Republic's economy. After William III, S. Death in 1702 the second Stadtholderless period was inaugurated. Despite having contributed much in the War of Spanish Succession, the Dutch Republic gained little from the peace talks in Utrecht 1713. The end of the War of Austrian Succession in 1748, and Austria becoming allies with France against Prussia, marked the end of the Republic as a major military power. Fierce competition for trade and colonies, especially from France and England, furthered the economic downturn of the country. The Three Anglo-Dutch Wars and the rise of mercantilism had a negative effect on Dutch shipping and commerce. See also 
Topic: History of the Netherlands. List of Grand Pensionaries. Financial history of the Dutch Republic. Topic: References. Topic. Topic. Further reading. Topic. Adams, Julia. The Familial State, Ruling Families and Merchant Capitalism in Early Modern Europe. Ithaca, Cornell University Press, 2005 Boxer, C. R. The Dutch Seaborne Empire 1600–1800. London, Penguin Books, 1990 Ertel, Alan W. 2008. Toward an Understanding of Europe, a Political Economic Precy of Continental Integration. Universal Publishers. ISBN 978-1-59942-983-0 Israel, J. I. The Dutch Republic, Its Rise, Greatness, and Fall 1477-1806 Oxford, Clarendon Press, 1995 Kuznitsky, Jason 2008. Dutch Republic. In Hamowy, Ronald. The Encyclopedia of Libertarianism. Thousand Oaks, C.A., Sage, Cato Institute pp. 130-31. doi.10.4135.9781400.0001. n83. ISBN 978-1412965804. LCCN 2008009151. OCLC 750831024. Reynolds, Clark G. Navies in History. Annapolis, Naval Institute Press, 1998 Shama, Simon The Embarrassment of Riches, An Interpretation of Dutch Culture in the Golden Age. New York, Random House, 1988 Van der Berg, Martin. Transforming the Dutch Republic into the Kingdom of Holland, the Netherlands between Republicanism and Monarchy 1795-1815. European Review of History 2010-17 No. 2, pp. 151-70 online External links Dutch Golden Age 1588-1702 Documentary on YouTube in English in Latin, The Dutch Republic, enlarged and edited, produced with the care and work of Matthias Souter from around 1730.